As Chair of the Joint Committee on Education and Skills, I am delighted to have the opportunity to move this motion and to open the debate on this matter. The report that we are discussing here today arose from a number of contacts and requests made to myself and other members of the committee, identifying the problems related to the adequacy of training and supports for providers of special needs education and also education in relation to deaf schools and indeed schools that we feel that should possibly have gotten deaf status and didn't receive so. Having considered the matters, it was given priority by the Education and Skills Committee and a number of stakeholders were invited to make a written submission outlining their views on these matters, which led to the Committee agreeing to hold a public hearing in more, to examine in more detail the points raised in those submissions. And I want to thank those stakeholders who came to the Committee and gave oral hearings. And they are Ms. Dervla Nikra, the Director of Education and Research for the INTO, Dr. Anne Ryan, Senior Lecturer in Education, Marino Institute of Education, Dr. Jean Mehigan, Principal Lecturer in Education, Marino Institute, uh, Ms. Noreen Duggan, Principal of Skull and Nave Illig in Newbridge, Ms. Pauline Dempsey, Principal of St. Anne's Special School in the Curra, Ms. Breda Corr, General Secretary of the National Association of Boards of Management in Special Education, Ms. Theresa Griffin, the CEO of National Council for Special Education, Ms. Madeleine Hickey, the Director of Special Education Support Service for the National Council for Special Education, and Dr. Anya Highland, Professor of Education in the University College of Cork and indeed it was a very worthwhile exchange with all of those. The report that I'm laying before the House today deals with two distinct topics, training and support for providers of special needs education and education in DESH schools. But the committee did agree to consider both of them together. In the course of the hearing, a number of themes emerged which were of particular concern to the committee. And these are highlighted in the committee's report and form the basis for the eight key recommendations relating to both topics. We all recognise that attending mainstream schools for those with special educational needs results in a significantly better outcome for the student and indeed the wider community in terms of inclusiveness. Um, it is accepted though of course that special schools have a particular role to play for, for some students and their families. However, simply providing for these places will not have the desired result unless sufficient supports and resources are also made available, most especially qualified personnel. It is absolutely essential that all of those involved in the education community are fully and appropriately trained to ensure that the best interests of every student is at the centre of any decision and that any student who so wishes and if it is desire of their family should have the opportunity of attending a mainstream school within an ASD unit or indeed just within the mainstream classroom with the appropriate resources. The committee was told that there is a significant problem facing teachers attending courses to receive the appropriate training and this is due to a number of factors but one of particular concern which is something that the department could deal with relates to the lack of substitute teachers available to facilitate their release to attend this training. And I also want to mention specifically Minister the issue when um, schools are granted ASD units and then go, don't, don't get sufficient resorts to kit them out. For example, last Friday I was in a school in Leash in Ra, in Ra and um, that school caters for almost 250 students. Primary school, it has two ASD units. The department has uh, sanctioned and it's nearing the end of the build of an absolutely fantastic ASD unit and I really want to commend the department in relation to the quality of the, the build and I know it's going to make an incredible difference to the 12 young people who are going to be in the two units. However, the department haven't sanctioned one cent in relation to kitting out the unit. Now the unit is going to be ready in two to three weeks time. 
But, for example, there are three padded areas, one, two for breakout areas from the separate units and one for a sensory room. And the padding the, itself will cost quite an amount of money. And the department are refusing to pay for that because a number of years ago the same school got a small grant of €6,500 for another sensory space. Now, I actually saw that space on Friday. It's genuinely little more than a cupboard and um, there is absolutely no way that anything could be transferred from there. So I have put in uh, parliamentary questions and I've spoken to your office this week, Minister, about the situation because I've no doubt that this school isn't alone in this particular situation and I think it's important that, that we refer to it. In the classroom, the provision of an SNA is essential to assist the student and support them in achieving their full potential. However, we have to remember that the SNA is not the person who is responsible for the delivery of teaching or instruction. This is solely a matter for the teacher. It is appropriate for the SNA to work with the teacher so that the curriculum can be differentiated or adapted to suit the needs of individual pupils. In addition to the many challenges facing teachers and SNAs, the committee feel that their role is constantly being challenged with significant volume of paperwork and circulars emanating from the department. The principal focus of teachers and SNAs must always be on the student and their educational progression and personal development, and this should not be diluted by dealing with a burden of administrative duties. Yet many students with special educational needs still find themselves in classrooms with too many students and insufficient supports to allow them to make progress and achieve the goals to which they aspire. This creates a highly pressurised and frustrating environment and can result in students and teachers being injured at schools. Reports of such incidents have been brought to my attention and to the attention of other members of the committee and I have to say it is a shocking and unacceptable situation for everybody. One school told of the inadequate level of clinical staff to support the needs of certain students and that despite an increase in student numbers, it has had to reduce the number of hours clinical staff are available due to insufficient funding. The lack of adequate and appropriate supports for students in schools will obviously result in a negative experience and outcome for the student, their families and the wider school community. The committee notes that an increased capitation grant is paid to special education schools. However, the evidence to the committee clearly suggests that this is still insufficient and consideration may be given to the provision of such supports separate from capitation grants. I acknowledge that the state is investing a significant amount of its budget in providing support to special education, yet there are still glaring gaps in the service. Moving on to the DESH element of the report, I can say that the introduction of DESH was certainly very welcome, but a number of the contributors to the committee pointed out that there are still challenges within schools despite the scheme. And no matter what, there are disadvantaged children in every school, whether they have DESH status or not. So we really have to look to see how we can support those that are disadvantaged in schools that are not getting DESH status. DESH was originally aimed at addressing the educational needs of children and young people from disadvantaged communities. And this was a very welcome initiative and has delivered a significant level of success. Therefore, the introduction of its successor in 2017 was widely anticipated. But certainly, I have to say, Minister, that we as a committee, and I for one, will monitor its effectiveness going forward. And there certainly is dissatisfaction in relation to how the schools uh, were accepted for the DESH scheme. Uh, DESH 2017 does aim at providing a vision for education to, be more, to more fully become a pro proven pathway to better opportunities for those in communities at risk from disadvantage and social exclusion. So it plays a very, very important role and we can never forget that, but we need to have more resources within the scheme. Um, and DESH also sets out a number of objectives and actions to support children who are at greatest risk of educational disadvantage. These are 
to implement a more robust and responsive assessment framework for identification of schools and effective resource allocation, to improve the learning experience and outcomes of pupils in DESH schools, to improve the capacity of school leaders and teachers to engage, plan and deploy resources to their best advantage, to support and foster best practice in schools through inter-agency collaboration, to support the work of schools by providing the research, information, evaluation and feedback to achieve the goals of the plan. However, no DESH scheme can f succeed fully unless other elements of the education experience complement and support it in, achie in its achieving its goals. The problem with many such schemes is that they can be too rigidly interpreted and can fail some of those who they are supposed to help. I accept that such consequences are unintentional, but this appears to be the case based on the evidence to the Committee. All schemes and the guidelines governing their implementation and operation must have an inbuilt flexibility to develop in response to the ever-changing needs to achieve their aims. I believe that in addressing the issues highlighted by the Committee in producing this report, the outcomes will be universally beneficial by ensuring that the needs of the students are met, school staff on the ground can manage resources appropriately, and the State and all of our communities will get value for their money. The Committee's report makes a total of eight very reasonable and practical recommendations based on the evidence put to it. And I also want to note that the Minister has provided an overview of progress made under DESH Plan 2017, arising from recommendation number eight, and I, and I certainly welcome this. I do, however, wish to place on the record of a House again the other recommendations. And the very first one is that the Committee recommends the Epson Act 2004 be fully enacted. Um, and just to give a sentence or two on the Epson Act, the Education for Persons with Special Educational Needs Act 2004 puts in place legislation to give children with special educational needs the right to graduate from school with the skills necessary to participate to the level of their capacity in an inclusive way in the social and economic activities of society and to live independent and fulfilled lives. Parts of the law have been brought into effect, but not those which would give a statutory entitlement to provide students with a full assessment of the supports needed to allow them to participate in education and to have the necessary resource provided in accordance with an individual education plan have not been. And this is absolutely imperative, Minister. Uh, secondly, the Committee asked the Minister for Education and Skills to give consideration to the merits of establishing a two-year pilot co-teaching for inclusion project at primary level. Uh, third recommendation, the Committee recommends that the Minister for Education and Skills puts in place measures to address issues affecting schools which were raised in the course of the discussion, including the shortage of school places, facilitating children with challenging behavioural issues, injuries to staff and other pupils, and staff to pupils ratios and substitute cover. Recommendation number four, the Committee recommends that the shortage of specialist specialised school places for post-primary children with autism and other special educational needs be absolutely addressed as a matter of urgency. We had a particular issue in Kildare which took 18 months to resolve and um, this is something that's going to happen on an ongoing basis so it is of absolute priority. Um, recommendation number five, the committee recommends that the whole area of training for staff from teachers to bus escorts be made compulsory and that consideration be given to the provision of a separate fund for this training be, to be made available by the Department of Education so as not to impact further on the funding of schools. The sixth recommendation, the committee recommends the standardisation of nursing and clinical supports throughout the educational system be put in place. And recommendation number seven, the committee recommends that the findings and recommendations of supporting students with special educational needs in school be examined and implemented where practical. And um, Minister, in relation to number eight, and you have addressed this in a correspondence back to us, but I'll just 
you know, for the record, put it here that the committee recommends that an update on the implementation of the five goals identified in the DESH plan 2017 prior to the publication of the report be provided to the committee. The committee also believes that supports should be pupil centred and be made available to students who are disadvantaged rather than only providing for children who attend a DESH school. I would be grateful for some clarification regarding the apparent focus on allocating funds based on students who reside in an area of high deprivation as a proportion of the total enrolment. I take the view that the support should be associated with the student and should not be limited by virtue of just geographical location. Finally, and probably most importantly, I really want to acknowledge the commitment of all of those involved in the provision of education for children with special educational needs and for those who teach and, su and provide support in DESH schools throughout the state. Without them, many children would not have been given the opportunities that they have had to date. I also want to pay tribute to the dedication of secretarial and support staff in schools whose significant contributions are often overlooked. And this is something that the, the committee are considering formally examining in the future. The report and its recommendations highlight a number of specific issues which speak for themselves. And while addressing some of these may be underway, I look forward to hearing the Minister's reply. Thank you, Deputy. Um,